Hello. 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 Would you say hello to somebody else? Hello. Yeah, look around. Say hello to somebody. Get past the idea that we, we're not strangers. Just speak to somebody. I'll tell you. I'd like you to think about, I'd like you to take a breath, I'd like you to think about something that, uh, and it's going to be hard, it's going to be a challenge, but I want you to think about at least one thing, one situation, or one circumstance, I know it's going to be tough, that's not giving you peace. I just want you to think of this one thing right now that doesn't give you peace. Something that, you know, what you were thinking about before you got here. The thing that you woke up, the thing that you tell yourself, if that was different, you'd be happy. If they were different, it would be happy. And, and realizing in the class today that you don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it. Some of it you're going to find hard to believe, some of it's going to be startling. Um, you're not being asked to judge the ideas. If you use them, you'll see that they work. The Course in Miracles is one of those things you can analyze it all day long, but it's not until you start applying it that you start to see the difference in your experience. So, so, and I want you to tell yourself that whatever that situation is, tell yourself, I could see peace instead of this. Okay, I want you to say that. Think about the situation and then tell yourself, I could see peace instead of this. You think about the situation, the circumstance that you're using to keep yourself from feeling the peace of God, the love, the happiness that you deserve, and tell yourself, I could see peace instead of this. Then tell yourself, I could feel peace instead of this. Whatever it is you're feeling right now that's keeping you from feeling really happy, tell yourself, I could feel peace instead of this. I could see peace instead of this. And then I want you to think of your favorite bluegrass song. <laughs> Can you help us out a little bit? <laughs> Could see peace instead of pain, and everything that happens to everything that happens to me works together for my good. Works together for my good. I can see if I can see good in all things. In all things, I could see peace. Instead of pain, I could feel peace instead of pain. Mm, tell me more. I know that I am forgiven. I know that I am forgiven. As I forgive those who curse my name. As I forgive those who curse my name. It's not with how I see it. It all comes out of what I, how I see me. I could see peace instead of pain. I could see peace instead of pain. I could see peace. I could feel peace. You are innocent, 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 innocent. You are innocent no matter what you think about yourself. No matter who you're mad at. No matter what grievances you're feeling. I want you to know that you could feel peace instead of pain. You could feel peace. You could see peace. I'm asking, I'm asking for peace. I'm asking, I'm asking.
I'm requesting, I'm asking for peace instead of pain. Do you know that being afraid seems to be involuntary? Uh, that means that being afraid seems, seems like sometimes there's something beyond your control. Like before you can even, would you mind closing the blinds behind me? Just turn it, the thing, because I can't really see everybody. I want to see those closed eyes clearly. <laughs> I want to see glistening drool. <laughs> <laughs> Some people turn and say, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just the thought of me put them to sleep. Okay. So being afraid, if, if you got the book, I'm in the section that's called Fear and Conflict on page, I don't know what page it is. It's in, it's in uh, chapter two. It's called Fear and Conflict. I think it's around 24 to 30 something, because I'm using my iPad. I'm kind of like, I type up here. Mm -hmm. um, anybody find the page? 28. I think it's 28. Okay. Uh, being afraid, yes. Being afraid seems to be involuntary. Being afraid, it looks like sometimes you just can't help it. Yet I've said already that only constructive acts should be involuntary. You should not be able to help yourself from being <laughs> helpful. You, you, it, it's like how we can't help but be upset sometimes. It should be you can't help but be peaceful. Like even when you want to get mad, you can't. Even when you want to attack, you just can't. You have to, you have to make yourself do it. Because for you, being happy is, is as involuntary as being unhappy used to be. And the Course says, my control can take over everything that doesn't matter. So that's your higher power. Your higher power can take care and control everything that does not matter. And the guidance of your higher power can direct everything that does matter if you so choose. If you so choose. Your higher power can take control of everything that does not matter. And the guidance of your divine self can direct everything that does matter if you so choose. But your higher power cannot control your fear. But your fear can be controlled by you. It can be self-controlled. I can give you the guidance, I can take over what doesn't matter, but you are in control of your fear. Fear and upset is what prevents you from giving your higher power the control. Your fear and upset is what's keeping you from allowing love to be in control. The presence of fear shows that you have raised body thoughts to the level of the mind, which simply means you don't realize that everything that's happening to you is coming from your mind. Everything that's happening to you is coming from your mind. Everything that's happening to you is coming from your mind. Everything you're feeling is coming from your mind. And so that removes it from the control of your higher self. And so you feel personally responsible. And you feeling personally responsible is a confusion of levels, ultimately, because you are controlled by that which created you. You don't control that which created you. Now, your higher power is not the part of you that's making you confused about what's creating what. It's my thoughts that's creating my circumstances. It's not my circumstances that's creating <coughs> what's happening to me. It's my thoughts that are creating the circumstances. And so the Course says, you wouldn't excuse insane behavior on your part by saying you can't help it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to condone my insane behavior by saying, you know what? I just can't help it. I just had to go off on you. I, I 
just had to attack. I just had to do that. The court says, so since you don't excuse insane behavior, and we tend to not excuse insane behavior, crime is a good example of that, attack is a good example of that, the person doesn't go to court and we tend to excuse them. Oh, that was just insane behavior. Let's just overlook that right now and see if we can help the person out. We don't tend to excuse insane behavior. So why should you condone insane thinking? I don't condone my insane behavior, but why am I condoning my insane thinking? Why am I condoning your insane thinking? Then the court says there's a confusion here that you would do well to look at clearly. You may believe that you're responsible for what you do, but you may not believe that you're responsible for what you think. You may believe you're responsible for what you do, but you may not believe you're responsible for what you think. What I think came from my mama, from my daddy. It came from my background. It came from my culture. What I think came from my religion. And so sometimes people don't realize that they can change their beliefs as easily and as quickly if they choose as they change their underwear. Maybe more often. But, well, you know, I've always believed in hell, so it must, I just can't change my belief in that. I've always believed in guilt, so I, that this guilt must really be real. I've always believed I'm just a body and that I'm separate, and I've always believed that God is just a man in the sky that's not real. In other words, the Course in Miracles is saying to us that we don't really take responsibility for the way we think as much as we take responsibility for the things we do. And then it says the truth is you are responsible for what you think because it's only at the level of what you think that you can exercise choice. It's only at the level of what you think that you can start exercising choice. So if I want a new kind of relationship, I've got to start choosing differently about the way that I think. If I want a new financial situation, I've got to change the way I think. So the course then says, when you, you cannot separate yourself from the truth by giving autonomy to behavior, that's the same as saying, I cannot say that I just can't help being this way because I've always been this way. This is my habit. This is my programming because then I'm giving autonomy to behavior. And so I think I'm separating myself from the truth. And the truth is there's nothing about my behavior that my body never makes me do anything. My body never makes me do anything. The truth is my behavior isn't autonomous. My behavior is coming from my thinking, and my body is responding to my thinking. My body is responding to my thinking. My experience is responding to my thinking. Whew! Man, I really don't like that about some things in my experience, and I'm completely turned on about that. About, you know, if your life pretty much sucks, you don't like to hear the truth. Because if your life pretty much sucks, and this true stuff is saying you're the one that's creating what's going on, and that you're not the victim, and that you're the one that's making it happen, you ain't gonna like it. <laughs> if your life is working and you're feeling really great, and you're feeling really good about your experience right now, and someone tells you, well, your life is coming from your attitudes and the way you think and the way you feel, you'd be like, yeah, right on. <laughs> I, feel, I must be thinking pretty good. So those of you who are miserable right now, you're probably not liking this too much. <laughs> Those of you who are feeling good about something right now, you're probably going right on. But no matter whether you're feeling good or whether you're feeling bad, you've just been given away to another level of joy for yourself because you've just heard what can change any situation that you think you're going through right now, which is you and your thinking. And thank God it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else for you to be happy. <laughs> I made the realization when I was studying with a friend of mine the other day that there wasn't anything, <laughs> there wasn't any such thing as me being incompatible with anybody. And I was like, what? There's no such thing as being incompatible with anybody in truth. Would you like me to elaborate on that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, I got about 100 relationships that can you up. I'm on the 700 right now. 
because the miracle says it's natural for you to have relationships that you come together, learn as much as you can at any given time, and appear to separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That when you learn as much as you can at any given time, the relationship will appear to separate. The Course in Miracles says that it's rare to have a lifelong relationship with anybody. It's much more natural to come together, learn as much as you can, and appear to separate. And the pain comes from trying to keep it together when it's time for you to separate because you've learned as much as you can from each other at that time. <laughs> so what happens is you learn as much as you can from each other at that time, and you're trying to keep it together even though you already have learned as much as you can from each other at this time, and then that's where the pain comes from. You think the pain's coming from the relationship, but the pain is coming from your attachment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's much more natural to come together, learn as much as you can, have a really intense relationship, and then separate than it is to spend a lifetime with a person because that's really cruel. Do <laughs> <laughs> you really think somebody should be subjected to you for a lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> You're particularly sadistic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, until I become a really loving being yeah. and I really realize who I really am, do I really want somebody with me for a lifetime if I'm not going to be? So anyway, the Course says that's rare. And if, if it is anybody that you're with for a lifetime, it means you're at the same level of learning. So the people you're around for a lifetime are the people who are most like you. Mm. Mm. And he says what happens in a lifetime relationship is that you get unlimited opportunities. They're giving you unlimited opportunities to practice and learn the truth. And you don't, he, then the Course says, you don't necessarily, you're not going to necessarily like each other all the time either. <laughs> but you're still giving each other unlimited opportunities to learn. And that's rare. He says it's much more normal to come together, have an intense relationship, learn as much as you can from each other at the time, maybe include going to the movies. <laughs> Maybe that's where some of your biggest lessons are going to happen. <laughs> and then appear in the separate. We beat ourselves up because every relationship doesn't last forever, but really it's not natural for relationships to last forever. It's more natural for them to come together for a period of time and separate. Now, it's a, it's a easy, there's an easy way to see if what I'm saying is the truth. Ask yourself honestly, in your perception of the world, do you see more situations where people come together in a relationship, have an intense experience, and appear to separate? Or do you see most people coming together in a relationship and never, ever separating? separating. <laughs> right. So if something that happens so often, with so many different millions of people, wouldn't that really be the natural thing? <laughs> wouldn't that be the most natural thing if that's what all of us are mostly doing? But no. Not us. <laughs> if we saw it that way, we'd feel better. Heaven forbid. <laughs> if you say, oh, I'm on my 15th relationship in the last two years, you'd be like, yeah, I'm learning a lot right now. <laughs> I feel good about myself. <laughs> you know, when you go to college, you take a lot of classes. <laughs> you don't go to college and do one class. <laughs> and I've had a lot of classes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I was led into a class by a nice round ass. <laughs> And I had an ass class. <laughs> Just a black guy. <laughs> 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 I'm drumming, I'm gonna speed up though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little inside joke. <laughs> 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 so what did, I, what did I go off on that tangent for? To, to, it's another way of helping you feel innocent because that's mm -hmm. all the Course in Miracles does is it makes you recognize you're innocent mm -hmm. and it says that all pain comes from unconscious guilt and if you knew you were completely innocent you would never suffer because an innocent mind does not believe it deserves to suffer if you think you're innocent, you don't think you deserve to be hurt. I'm innocent, what you talking about? I didn't do that, I'm innocent. If you think you're guilty, you're waiting for punishment. Mm -hmm. You're expecting punishment. Mm -hmm. So every time you feel guilty about anything, you are requesting the universe to punish you. Mm -hmm. And it will appear to, mm -hmm. because you asked for it. I feel guilty, I need punishment in order to be right again, to absolve myself, so I attract a illness, an accident, a relationship that makes me miserable, a job I hate, a financial situation where the bank's calling me saying, 
we'll pay you to take your $2 out of our bank. <laughs> <laughs> this administrative cost of keeping your account isn't good for our stockholders. <laughs> <laughs> you don't put no money in in about six months. You see what I'm saying? So, so when you're hearing the truth, you will always recognize it because it makes you feel more peaceful. It, it immediately lightens your chest. And when you're hearing something that's not coming from the truth, you feel heavier, you feel depressed, and you feel more unhappy. So give the things in your life the heavy light test. <laughs> Think about what you want. If you've got a choice between two things, it says, which one of these things make me feel lighter, the idea of doing it, and which one makes me feel heavier? Does the idea of going out with you make me feel lighter, or does the idea of going out with you make me feel heavier? Does the idea of moving to this job make me feel lighter? Does the idea of doing this job make me feel heavier? Start with the heavy, because spirit, truth makes you feel lighter. Something that's not true makes you feel heavy. If you're feeling unhappy and miserable, that means that your perception is not true. So if you're unhappy about anything right now, you're not guilty, you're not bad, you're just wrong. <laughs> and I know in New Age circles we don't like to hear words like right and wrong for good and bad but you know the advantage of words like that you've already been programmed not to be bad you've already been programmed not to do wrong so when someone says wrong you immediately want to be right but if you say all ways are right then how do you choose in other words, if I left my apartment today and said any path would have taken me to the church, I could still be driving around in my car trying to find out the road that would get me here the quickest, and you'd just be sitting in an empty room. But if I told myself it was wrong to turn left and right to turn right, then I got here on time because I did this is a wrong turn, this is a right turn, that would be a wrong turn, this is a right turn, so I got here on time. So yes, unlimited possibilities exist in every direction. You just won't live long enough to do them all. <laughs> <laughs> so since we think we're in time, we do need phrases like, this is wrong-minded, this is right-minded, so that we can get to where we want to go. Because that doesn't mean you're bad, because you said that's the wrong way to go. That has nothing to do with a moral judgment on you. So I don't even understand why we put so much crap on that. There's nothing wrong with saying, Okay, it would be wrong for me to try to drive my car with a candy bar. <laughs> Does that mean I'm bad? No. So stop putting all that weight on, don't ever say you're wrong. If you're getting ready to drive off a cliff, you need to tell yourself, maybe that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so, How do you allow your behavior to be controlled automatically <coughs> by your higher self, by the higher power, by God? In other words, how, do, okay, spirit, I want you to take over in my life. I want my behavior, my, like when I'm up here teaching, you think it's me, but it's me, but it's not me. I'm as much amazed at what I say and when I watch these videos as anybody else is. Because what it feels like from my perspective is that something else is using me that's me. And then it's like Earl that you know is kind of like standing over to the side watching this dude. Going, okay, what? and he's taking notes too. Because I am the teacher's pet. <laughs> the teacher takes me around with him everywhere he goes. In other words, that's how bad a shape of me. <laughs> My higher self just carries me around with him all day long. <laughs> so, how do you put your behavior under the guidance of spirit? And then the Course says it in the very next part of the sentence. You place what you think under the guidance of your higher self. You place what you're thinking under the guidance of the truth. You place what you're thinking 
under the guidance of the truth. Then people say, well, how do I do that? Well, first, I have to hear the truth. So this is the way that it works. This is the way that accepting the truth works. It was in uh, A Course in Miracles lesson a couple, three days ago. Um, it's called, I Can Elect to Change All Thoughts That Hurt. It's, on, it's lesson 284. This is how, this is how you, these are the stages you go through to accept any new idea. I'm going to tell you the stages you're going to go through to accept any new idea. Let's say your new idea is that you want to love yourself more than you ever loved yourself before. <coughs> Let's say your new idea is that you're an unlimited spiritual being and you're not just a limited body. Let's say your new idea is that you're free and that you're not limited. Let's say your new idea is that abundance is your natural state and not lack. Let's say your new idea is you deserve love instead of thinking I'm not good enough. So I got these new ideas. I'm coming to these classes to learn. How do I learn them? Isn't that a good question? How do I accept them? Okay, these are the stages right here. It says first, the truth has got to be said. So the first thing I got to do is I got to hear the new idea that I say I want to accept is true, which means at the very beginning, I won't believe what I'm hearing. I probably won't believe what I'm hearing because it's new, it's different. So it's, you're setting yourself up if you think you have to believe a new idea first. And that's what happens in classes like this. People are calm and they think they're being asked to believe what I say as soon as I say it from the course, even though they might believe something totally different. Let's say you were brought to believe in sin and guilt, and I say you're innocent and sinless. You're not going to believe that completely. And if, you, and if you really believe in sin and guilt, you're going to actually become frightened that you heard me say that. So the Course is saying to us, the first thing that must happen is the truth must first be said, like, you are entitled to miracles. Okay? Then it says, then repeat it many times. You are entitled to miracles. You are entitled to miracles. I'm entitled to miracles. You're entitled to miracles. I'm entitled to miracles. You are 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 entitled to miracles. And a miracle is a state of completion and abundance. The Course says a miracle is a state of completion and abundance. So I could also say you are entitled to states of completion and abundance. You are entitled to states of completion and abundance. You deserve to have completion and abundance. You are entitled to miracles. Miracles should just naturally come to you. If miracles aren't happening in your life, something is going wrong because miracles are ordinary. Mm -hmm. Having love is ordinary. Being happy is ordinary. Having people that value you is ordinary. Having freedom is ordinary. Having a joyful life is ordinary. It should not be special for you to have a good day. It should be special when you don't have a good day. You don't go, I had, I had 364 miserable days and a happy birthday. But the rest of the year sucked. But I had the best the birthday ever. And so it was very special. No, it should be the other way around. You should have days that are full of joy and peace for you as an ordinary experience. And when something doesn't go your way in your perception, you go, that's special. We got it exactly opposite. So how do I get to that point? I have to say, I am entitled to miracles. I deserve to be happy. It should be ordinary for me to be happy. Happiness should be natural for me. Abundance is my natural state. Having loving relationships is natural for me. I've got to say it over and over and over again because the first stage to accepting the truth of something is what? It must be said to you. Then it's got to be repeated many times. Like sometimes people make comments about after a while they come to my class and say, well, it sounds like you're saying the same thing over and over again. And I said, that's exactly right. <laughs> I'm just saying it in different ways, but it's exact. you should hear the same thing over and over and over again. You should come because you know I'm going to say the same thing over and over again. Because when you listen to the news, they're saying the same things over and over and over again, and you never get time to listen to that. Your mama's saying the same thing over and over. Your boyfriend's saying the same. Your boss saying you saying. Nobody goes. I've heard enough ego stuff. I'm going to hear that over and over again. But when you say say something loving, people think they're doing a big deal if they just say it one time. If I say I'm cool one time, that should be enough. I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. Then what do you get in a relationship for? So they always tell each other you're cool. But then you don't. If you don't love yourself, you get in a relationship, then instead of you telling each other you're cool, you be telling each other you're a fool. Hmm. You be telling each other you're a fool instead of telling each other you're cool. And I'm holding that relationship is I'm telling you that you're a fool. 
A holy relationship is I'm telling you that you're cool. So your relationships are always a reflection of that which you want to learn about yourself, what you want to hear about yourself. And you can't get away from the person that's telling you what you believe about yourself. You can't leave the person that's telling you what you believe about yourself. You can't even forget the person that you believe is telling you what you believe about yourself. So sometimes the person who treats you the worst is the one that's the hardest to let go of because they're reflecting back to you what you believe about yourself more than anybody else. <laughs> but when you know you deserve more, the Course of Miracles says that you're not really good at handling minor intrusions of discomfort. That you can't stay in crap as long as you used to. That you move out of stuff really fast because you love yourself and your spiritual awareness is opening up. Being long-suffering means you really haven't awakened yet. It doesn't mean you're becoming a spiritual giant because you can stay in a miserable situation for a long time. <laughs> it means that you are a spiritual dwarf. Because a person that's waking up to their true self will not tolerate abuse, attack, and not being appreciated. They just won't put up with it for two seconds. So if you find yourself changing things faster, making moves faster, doing stuff faster, not, you know, then you ought to be proud of yourself. I can talk to somebody for five minutes to know whether or not I ought to be in a special relationship with them. Why? Well, I was attracted to them. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. If every time you get into any kind of relationship in the long run, you end up being miserable, then the minute you feel attracted to somebody, you need to go the other way. <laughs> but no, not us. We'll go, oh, this might be the one. Why? Because I'm attracted. Well. Wasn't that true when you was hanging out with the serial killer? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most powerful relationships and loving relationships that you're going to ever have with anybody is going to be somebody you weren't attracted to at first and your attraction grew over time. Yeah. Not the person that you, as soon as you saw them, you just wanted to throw them down and rip their clothes off and just have your way. <laughs> That's a flare. I call it the fireworks. You know how fireworks do? <laughs> yeah, I want the slow, sturdy, steady burn. No, that's not a good way to put it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> correction. Because <laughs> <laughs> man, you want no slow, steady burn. <laughs> so. <laughs> You got stage one? Who can tell me what stage one is? <laughs> to hear it and then what? Over. They repeat it many, many times. times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the second stage is, I love this, next to be accepted as but partly true with many reservations. So the next step, you're going to repeat it many, many times, and then you're going to go, well, maybe it's true I'm entitled to miracles, but I don't know. But maybe I deserve to be happy, but no, I don't know what I did the other night. You know, it's like at first you hear the truth, you begin to accept it, but you have reservations about what you're hearing. That's the next stage. So if you're at the point right now where you're hearing this truth stuff, but you still have reservations, that's natural. You're in stage two. So if you're a person sitting out there with a lot of reservations about the truth that you're hearing and these new ideas that are coming your way, you're in stage two. You're in stage two. You're doing good. Yeah. yeah. It's nothing more depressing than being told we okay where we are. <laughs> Isn't that right? It's like if I've set my life up that it's broke and I have to fix it, and someone's telling me I'm not broken, I don't get too excited about that. If someone mm -hmm. tells me I'm doing okay just where I am, but I've set it up that there's something wrong with me, it doesn't excite me when I hear, okay, I'm beginning to accept this and I have some reservations. That means I'm doing good. That's natural. I used to think I wasn't a really handsome guy. Now I'm believing maybe I am, but I got some reservations because I know what I look like naked. Okay, so. <laughs> and all of you are naked beneath your clothes. All of you! <laughs> and there's not a whole lot of difference either. But you really think about it, bodies just look different. They're pretty much the exact same. 
There's just a cornucopia of bodies out there. You want bodies? They just everywhere. <laughs> every kind of shape, every kind of color, in different languages, you know. But finding the same person, now that's really an achievement. Yeah. Getting a body is child's play. Yeah, that's true. It's nothing easy in the world than having somebody's body. And that's the first thing that they hold out as the biggest treasure you can get. I'm going to go home, you can you, you, you gonna work for it. You can just buy it. <laughs> there might be a billion other bodies out there, but they're not my body. <laughs> Mine is different. It's a different shape. But it's the same thing. <laughs> now, what's really unique is to meet somebody with a loving, conscious mind. A gentle mind, an aware mind, a giving mind. Now that now you're dealing with something that's really cool. And I guarantee you, in most cases, that mind is gonna come with the body. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> My theme for the last few weeks has been same people have genitals too. <laughs> you don't have to go for the crazos just because you're attracted to their bodies and how they look. So even though they're crazy, you still deal with them because you like how they look. Same people also have bodies too. You know what's cool about same people? They will keep loving you even if your body changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as I get older, <coughs> I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't such a big deal a few years ago. I want somebody to love me for my mind more than ever. <laughs> <laughs> you being happy ahead of time, we working up to joy. You came here already. You skipped ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do. That's what you do. You must be an Aries. <laughs> You're a Taurus. All right. Well, I'm taking it slow. Because that's what the Course said do. Slow. Mm. Then you hear the truth. You accept it with many reservations. Then you start to consider it seriously more and more. You know, I could be innocent. Maybe I am the creator of my experience. Maybe, maybe having relationships come together and appear to separate, that doesn't mean that I'm dysfunctional in relationships. It just means I'm learning and I'm innocent. Just maybe there is a God. Maybe I, maybe I didn't create myself. Maybe I have a creator. Maybe I exist because I had a causative factor involved. Maybe there is something more than what I... See, so you start to consider this stuff more and more. Then it says, finally, accept it as the truth. So you consider it seriously more and more, and then you finally accept it as the truth, and you go, you know what? The way I see it is I'm the one that's creating the way that I'm feeling about things. You know what? I'm the one that's determining how I feel. You know what? I'm going to take responsibility. So the realization that I made that I was talking about earlier about compatibility, <clears throat> that was a good loop back to that, wasn't it? was the only reason why I'm ever incompatible with anyone is because I am not taking full responsibility for my own happiness. In other words, I'm telling myself if they behave differently or acted differently, then I would be happy. I say that again. But if I was in a relationship with you and I saw myself as totally responsible for my joy and I didn't see you as responsible for my joy at all, what would I get upset with you about? Because you couldn't upset me because I'm responsible for keeping Earl happy. You are not responsible for keeping Earl happy. So no matter how you express <laughs> yourself, I would still be happy. So I would be compatible with you because I would not be giving you a hard time. I would let you be, and if it was necessary in, for my happiness that I choose something different or I do something different, then I would do it without attacking you, still be in a peaceful relationship with you, because a peaceful relationship doesn't have anything to do with whether my body is around your body. A peaceful relationship with you is me only wanting your peace 
and me only wanting my piece and not doing anything to attack your piece and me holding myself responsible for my piece. So I'm compatible with you because I'm not trying to get you to behave differently in order for me to be happy. So every time I'm upset with anybody, it's because I am not taking responsibility yes. for my happiness. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. 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 The happy people were glad to hear that. The unhappy people that didn't really move them at all. You can always, there are no private thoughts. You can tell what middle state everybody's in the room is about their responses. Some people looked at me like, I'm going to kill you, black man. It's going to be a dead black man on that video tape. They're going to see the, the murder of Raj. This is going to be his last video. What did he do? He told people they deserve to be happy. He was of the devil. <laughs> what did he say? He said I was innocent. He was purely from Satan. <laughs> he told me I was responsible, that I was in charge of my life. What a manipulative son. <laughs> He just trying to control me. How did he do that? He told me I had control. <laughs> Don't go to that place. <laughs> You're hot today, baby. I'm hot every day. Oh, 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 oh. See? I believe that. Sometimes I just don't know it, just don't show it. You with me now? So if you want to accept anything, if you want to believe anything, if you want to change your mind about anything, if you want the truth to be in your perception, if you want to have a new life, the first thing you do is what? You have to first hear the truth or the new idea. And this is very important. You've got to hear it over and 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 over. It can't be, I'm just going to hear it maybe every now and then on a Sunday with Earl. That is not going to work. It can't be every now and then I'm going to focus on the truth when I'm not busy with everything else that I'm doing. Whatever those new ideas, see, I'm tell you, the day of the life of me. I'm on the way over here, I'm listening to the truth because I've recorded this book four or five times calling my own name in different ways. All night long, I got it on my iPod dock, listening to the truth when I'm working on my charts and sessions, it's going in the background. Every waking moment of the day, every t moment I can, I'm listening to the ideas that I want to be true for me, and then I try to choose relationships that are also reinforcing the ideas that I want to learn also, because if it's my thinking that's creating my reality and creating what I draw to me and creating what happens to me, then there's nothing, nothing on this earth more important than me giving myself new ideas all the time so that I can hear it, begin to accept it with a little reservation, consider it seriously more and more, and finally go, you know, that's the truth. I am innocent. I do deserve to be loved. I am connected to my source. I am not alone. I am entitled to miracles. And you're saying it, and you believe it, and you believe it because you said it enough to accept it as true. And then the minute you accept it as true, which means you're not opposing it anymore, then you've gotten rid of all the blocks that keep the love and the miracles and the abundance that's your natural right from just showing up in your life because they're already there anyway, but you're not seeing it. So all of a sudden, it looks like you have an instantaneous manifestations of your joy, and it freaks you out. Because all of a sudden, you are in alignment with the universe, which only wants you to be happy. And you are the only one holding it up by the beliefs that you have that are not based on how loving and beautiful you are. Because you heard you were guilty, sinless, stupid, sinful, stupid, not enough, lacking. And you, that's what was repeated over and over and over and over until we accept it as true, and then our reality reflects it back to us and makes us believe it's true that we're not enough, that we're insecure, and so we accept it as true, and we believe it's true because our, the universe says yes to anything that we think, so if I think I'm not enough, the universe says yes, and then I'll see proof that I'm not enough. So the only way out of it is to be told things you do not believe at first because you're physically seeing the opposite, but not judging yourself by the previous manifestations that you're going through based on your old beliefs. I came in the restaurant, mm -hmm. I ordered a hamburger, I changed my mind after the waiter left, and now I want a hot dog, so now I don't want a hamburger anymore, so when he brings the hamburger out, I'm going to say, no thank you, what I really want now is a hot dog. So while you're asking for a new life, you're going to see 
reflections of your old beliefs about you still mm -hmm. showing up and you have to realize that's your <laughs> old order from the kitchen that you've been doing all the time and don't let that fool you into thinking that your new ideas are not going to produce the new dish that you get ready to eat. Mm -hmm. Are you with me on this? Yeah. Because what slows us down is this, you know, I think one positive thought and I haven't seen the world change today. <laughs> 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 what happened? <laughs> And the truth is, you still have a lot of orders coming out of the kitchen that's the opposite to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep sending in a new order, keep sending in a new order while it looks like the old order is still coming. So, so when people and situations and relationships and things from the past come back around again, and you know it's the same old attraction that you had before, and you say, oh, that's the hamburger. You know, this is, the, this is a reflection of what I used to ask for, and it's still showing up in my experience, and I got to say, no, thank you. You're a beautiful hamburger, but now I'm into tofu. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm a fifth degree tofu. <laughs> Instead of kung fu, I'm an expert in tofu. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it took all me a while. All of, all of, all of a self food, and, you know, fanatic is going to be like proud. I got an eighth degree tofu belt. <laughs> so it's very important for you to realize if you're just now trying to change your mind about yourself and just, just now trying to love yourself and give yourself a new life, you're going to see some orders from the kitchen that you used to order. And don't judge yourself by the old orders showing up. But don't you dare take a bite out of that hamburger. Mm. Mm. And that's what I do. I just want to have a little milk. <laughs> <laughs> on the hamburger right now. <laughs> I can look at the tail, but, it, but it, that's not a hamburger, y'all. That's a turkey burger. <laughs> it's just being a turkey. It looks so good. I know that bun looks good, but <laughs> it ain't gluten-free, I tell you that. <laughs> This makes so much sense, you just have to pretend you didn't understand what I said. It's like, this is a class of pure sanity. It's like, talk to me about my chakra. <laughs> talk to me about my aura. Tell me my colors right now. Now, I don't hear this stuff. Yeah, this is calling for me to change my mind. That's right. So I'm telling you, abundance is your natural state. You deserve to be happy. God's will for you is happiness. Say that over and over and over and over again. You repeat it. You begin to kind of take it seriously for a minute. Then you consider it more and more and finally wake up one day and go, you know what? My creator's will for me is total happiness and that's what I want for myself too. I'm no longer opposing it. I accept that that's true. I deserve relationships that I'm loved in. I deserve to not have to worry about my abundance. I deserve to feel safe every day. I deserve to have situations in my life that free me and inspire me. That should be my natural state. Now I'm accepting that is true. And since that's what the universe has always wanted to do for me anyway, it actually, the good stuff will come faster than the so-called bad stuff did because you were the only one making yourself miserable. Nobody was really helping you do that. But when you're ready to be joyful, the whole universe becomes your support system. And so you begin to see the better things show up faster than ever before. So you're the only one that's holding the process up. So all you have to do is make the decision today that you're going to start giving yourself true ideas and repeat them over and over and over and over again, consider it more and more and more with reservations until you say it so many times that you're going, you know what, that is true. And then all of a sudden you see the manifestations of all the things that would truly make you happy in your perception of your life. Would you acknowledge yourself for hearing that? Much <laughs> That was so good. Oh, I did not know I that. Okay. It did so much. Yeah, see, that was one of the Course in Miracles workbook yeah. lessons. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You know, so the Course in Miracles is a book that's full of the ideas. And if you're not into the Course in Miracles, get some other truth book. But doggone it, don't listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> Resign now as your own teacher, please. And the course said you would surely do that if you really honestly look at the result of your own teaching of yourself. <laughs> so uh, I thank you for uh, sharing the financial expression of appreciation with me. I'm a full-time teacher of this stuff. 
And so I appreciate your generosity. And those of you on the internet, thank you so much for yours. If you want to make a financial expression of appreciation, go to my website, earlpurdy.com. Also, I'm available for clarity sessions, with, which I use the Course in Miracles and all the true teachings I've learned and astrology and numerology for those who are open to it to give you answers and insights into how to get your life to work in your perception right now. Because you do not have an original problem. I guarantee you, you're not gonna present no, you're not gonna present one situation that's new. <coughs> I don't care what you think you're going through. It will not be new. It's gonna be health, it's gonna be relationship, it's gonna be finances, and at some level it might be spiritual spiritual development, but that's usually weird down on the on the, on the, on the, on the <laughs> it's, it's always the same stuff. And so there are answers from the course and answers that I can give you coming from these teachings that you can take advantage of. So you don't have to figure it out. It's already been figured out. We just need to hear it. And so I also want to invite you to, to come to Unity Temple and check out the service here at 11 o'clock. This is a cool place. That's the fantastic minister right there, Reverend Chihol. Get him! Can you tell them that you're speaking next Sunday at 11? I'm so glad to know that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know I love you. Okay, and I believe is showing Cloud Atlas in two weeks at her house. Ooh. The address is in our bulletin. Ooh. Cloud Atlas, I know, awesome. Yeah, we do a we do a movie thing, a higher conscious movie thing once a week. Mm. I mean, once a month, and it's awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so there's a song I like to play, this is one of my favorite songs by Reverend Yolanda, it was a trip to watch do his thing. I want you to do, I want you to hear, I'm gonna go through the stages one more time. Are you ready? I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt, that's the lesson. I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt. What? I can let to change. What? All thoughts that hurt. Me. I can let to change. What? All thoughts that hurt. Me. Now, now, you never have to participate out loud. Some people just like to listen and that is okay. But if you feel like expressing yourself, feel okay to do that too. I'm not pressuring you one way or the other. But you know why? You know why? Because my happiness doesn't depend on you. My happiness doesn't depend on you. No, my happiness doesn't depend on you. You know what that means? And this is good news. See, that means I don't have a good time. I don't care how quiet you are. I don't care if you like it. I don't care if you approve of it. See, I can make myself feel good. <laughs> I always get lucky with myself. I've never turned me down. And I've never been pregnant either. <laughs> Uh, but if I waited for somebody else to get me off, see, then I gotta try to figure it out. I gotta try to talk into it. I try to gotta get, gotta try to make you like me. I gotta get that crap. Cause spirit knows exactly who needs you, exactly the way you are. Who appreciates all your qualities? Who needs your qualities? So they'll just be saying to you, "I want you to be more yourself. I want you to be more yourself." I want you to be more yourself. I want you to be more. Now, what does that mean? I appreciate you so much and who you are. I love who you are so much. I just want to see more of it. Express who you are more. I'm not trying to change you in any way. I just want to see more of who you really are. Because I'm not trying to use you to make me happy. You're not
not here to make me happy. You're here to remind me of the truth about myself. You're here to remind me of the truth about myself. You're here to remind me that I deserve love. You're here to remind me that love is my natural state. So that's the true reason for a relationship, to be reminded of who you really are. Don't be with somebody who helps you forget who you really are by telling you that you're not enough, that you're guilty, that you're bad, that you're horrible. Don't let nobody convince you of what you're not. You want somebody that's going to remind you of who you really are. You are free. You are unlimited. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are holy. You are powerful. You are healing. You are adorable. You are spectacular. You are incredible. You now, and first you gotta hear that, right? So you meet somebody, they're telling you that you say, oh, you full of stuff. That's because you don't believe it. That's because you don't believe it. So you need to hear it over and over again. Have it repeated. You have some reservations about accepting it, but you hear it over and over again until you consider it more and more. And then you say, hey, I am beautiful. I am incredible. I'm not alone. And then all of a sudden, you look around, and you'll be sitting in a room one night, let's say a Saturday night, and you look around you, and you're seeing all these luscious, beautiful beings that you're just walking around in, in rooms praying and saying wonderful things to each other. All of a sudden, you're surrounded by all this love. You don't get old love. You want to love you. This love. I say you are love. I say you are love. I say you are the I'm not. It's a brand new day to look at life in a different way. Could you, could you just like breathe? It's a brand new day to look at life in a different way. So go to yourself. I want another way of looking at this. I want another way of looking. You know the situation. I want another way of looking at this. I want another way of is your teacher. This person is your savior. This person is getting you to make the choice for your happiness more sincere than ever before. Everyone is your savior. They all give you an opportunity to change your mind about yourself. They're a blessing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming out today. Ah, hugs are available. I love hugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. One more time. Yes. <laughs> so if you want to boogie on out, that's okay, too. <laughs>